بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين السلام عليكم I'm very honored to be here with you for this opening to the opening session of such a nice conference well organized nice venue as is being told so just to cut time short I would just jump on the on the topics so I'll be talking to you today for on the genomes of high grade glioma. Uh, from both aspects, adult and pediatric as well. So, um, high-grade glioma usually refer to uh, uh, WHA uh, grade 3 and 4, uh, with the very minor exception of PXA uh, that are dealt with almost similar in, in, in both groups. Uh, in pediatrics, it accounts for 9 to 12 percent of all brain tumors, and it's the most common malignant uh, new plasm in adult, uh, and the usual uh, uh, etiology here is uh, it's a de novo kind of uh, arise of the tumor, while malignant transformation uh, is a very common phenomenon in adult, uh, and it tends to be more aggressive and associated with worse, and the outcome is worse uh, in comparison to adult, but it's still it's considered a, as aggressive uh, new plasm in adult as well. Uh, the common location is brainstem in pediatric while supratentorial in adult. And for the infant uh, among the pediatric age group, uh, during the first year of life, they tend to behave uh, differently with the uh, uh, tumor biology that seems to be uh, unique. I'll uh, leave this to my colleague, Dr. Balbaid. He will, come, uh, he will uh, address this uh, more thoroughly. Uh, um, and for the risk factor for uh, um, high-grade glioma in general, we know environmental plays a major role. Uh, and it's well known that it's associated with uh, ionized radiation exposure. In pediatric age group, uh, uh, Walter et al. studied uh, in, in St. Jude Hospital, studied uh, 1621 kids uh, who had been exposed to radiation uh, for leukemia, uh, usually between 18 grades. Uh, and uh, found uh, 22 uh, kids developed uh, brain tumor. 10 of those were high-grade glioma, uh, 11 were meningioma, and when one was low-grade glioma. Uh, and other exposure to cell phone uh, radiation and, and failed to be proven as a, a risk factor. Genetic risk factor in pediatric age group is quite important, and uh, because I have said earlier, the infant high grade glioma tend to, to behave differently, and uh, there are lots of inherited syndrome that might be that predisposed to uh, development of high grade glioma. Uh, and uh, germline mutation usually involved in such a process of uh, associated with both inherited syndrome and the development of uh, glioma is uh, uh, um, uh, that uh, causes uh, cell line prol proliferation. Uh, the first uh, well-known uh, syndrome is a neurofibromatosis type one. It's a very a common uh, genetic uh, disorder uh, and it's uh, inherited as autosomal dominant and the vast majority are diagnosed uh, uh, clinically uh, with a, a defect of neurofibromin uh, synthesis and uh, they tend to develop mostly low-grade glioma but uh, uh, Rosenfeld et al. Uh, 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 clearly showed that there is increased risk of high-grade glioma too. The Lee Fromeni syndrome, uh, it's a, a syndrome that has been recognized lately as a, a defect in TP53 and associated with uh, so many tumors and usually um, first degree relatives aged less than 45 years associated with any of those tumors that has been listed and as the P53 will be shown uh, involved well in the cell cycle uh, and uh, DNA damage. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the apoptosis. Other, other rare causes of Turcot syndrome, uh, tuberous sclerosis, and von Hippel-Landau also is being implicated and uh, considered as rare causes of increased risk of high-grade glioma too. 
Uh, there is a new category now that's been recognized called the mismatch repair defect, uh, which uh, uh, is a syndrome that overlaps with the Turcot syndrome. Uh, this uh, gene of the Turcot syndrome is known as uh, adenoetous polyposis coli uh, that usually predisposes to uh, medulloblastoma. But in a small subset of uh, patients that has been described to have uh, increased risk of uh, high-grade glioma. And when they uh, uh, try to study those, they find a, a different molecular uh, finding. The gene, defective gene were not the same, and uh, the uh, numbers of polyposis inside uh, the colo when they do the colonoscopy is different. So when it, uh, in the Turcot syndrome, they'll find hundreds of thousands of polyps, while only few or like uh, less number of the polyposis were uh, identified in uh, mismatch repair defect. So this important uh, uh, mismatch repair defect uh, uh, recognition because uh, they uh, over, I mean, they show some they share some clinical uh, manifestation of the uh, neurofibromatosis, which is the commonest gene. So whenever you have a, a, a KFOLA, a axillary flexuring or so relation nodule, you have to really think uh, that uh, uh, those patients might be a mismatch repair defect. So a careful family history might be, especially with the GI tumor as well. The diagnostic testing before we do that is usually uh, divided between assessing or assessing the proteins and assessing the DNA with various uh, different technology. Uh, the new technology usually, uh, it's, uh, not all of them are commercially available and uh, lots of them are limited to only research lab. Uh, while DNA sequencing, black like BCR and, and, and FISH and, and DNA sequencing and analysis is very important. Uh, so these are the uh, uh, type of, uh, uh, the demo, I mean, the graph that describe the glioma cells and the tumor cells and the various method of, of uh, uh, tumor genesis in, in, in such uh, cases. Uh, so we'll go in the detail of, of uh, uh, each uh, pathway. Uh, first of all, the uh, six methyl guanine DNA methyl transferase, the MGMT, the most famous. And this is because suggested mechanism of chemoresistance because the um, temozolamide, which is the most common, uh, commonly used medication, uh, uh, act in, in uh, 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 or uh, methylization uh, of DNA at position number six, uh, causing a pair mismatch, and that induced the cell death uh, to repair that defect. Uh, the MGMT promoter uh, methylation is uh, um, a phenomena uh, that if it happens, it prevents that method from, from being there. So uh, there is uh, no repair for uh, the MGMT. So the MGMT uh, prevents the, uh, 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 the methylization of that position 6, and uh, uh, the promoter methylization uh, inhibit that effect. So uh, uh, it was found that if you have more promoter methylization, uh, the uh, uh, usually associated with a better response to the alk alkylator agent like temozolamide. The other mechanism is the epidermal growth factors receptor, which is a tyrosine uh, uh, receptor. And uh, sorry, uh, yeah. Um, uh, so those uh, uh, receptors are, are, are uh, uh, triggered by uh, uh, ligands and uh, uh, by causing acetylization, uh, dimerization, and then uh, activation of the uh, signaling, downstream signaling to cause uh, uh, cell growth or uh, uh, preventing of apoptosis as well. Uh, so the overexpression of those receptors was found uh, uh, be associated with uh, poor survival, and it's uh, commonly explained in adult uh, GBM of 30 to 50 percent. And the most common mutation there is uh, uh, EGFR8, uh, and um, uh, reported in AGM. So erlotinib uh, to block uh, this uh, receptor uh, was tried, but uh, the, uh, the um, uh, and clinical uh, trial uh, was found to be uh, with limited efficacy. Uh, but uh, uh, Mellinghoff et al. Uh, showed the co-expression of EGRF8 and uh, uh, P10, like phosphate uh, and tensin homolog, as a 
associated with a better outcome. Uh, and then recent study uh, showed that there are some uh, the downstream also uh, uh, the genes can reflect better response as well. Uh, <coughs> the other mechanism is the platelet growth factor, which is almost the same, but uh, it's a tyrosine kinase uh, uh, receptor, uh, the BDGFR, and that's the most common uh, attractive uh, pathway involved in the glioma uh, development, especially in kids. And it regulates uh, the angiogenesis, uh, and it's involved in the uh, proliferation of neuronal differentiation, too. Uh, and um, uh, somatic. Uh, and wild type has been explained. The somatic uh, type in pediatric and the wild type uh, was also explained in the adult uh, GBM. So imitinib, the uh, um, anti-tyrosine kinase, uh, uh, in combination uh, with hydroxyurea was described with, uh, with some uh, you know, uh, data showed uh, li limited efficacy as well. Uh, so uh, blocking this might not be associated with the anticipated uh, uh, result, as uh, signaling uh, through the RAS mitogenes uh, uh, can also occur. So uh, those uh, uh, pathway can be activated regardless of uh, uh, mutation in, in, in those receptor too. And then the phosphatase, uh, phosphate and tensin homolog, uh, the BTN, uh, uh, so uh, uh, here, uh, the P3K, the phosphate uh, uh, inositol uh, 3K, catalyzes the addition of phosphate uh, to make it triphosphate. Uh, and uh, uh, this, is, uh, uh, um, this process will uh, usually trigger also the uh, cell uh, proliferation as well. The BTN is a, 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 a pathway that, you know, I tend to inhibit this pathway. Uh, so it's a tumor suppressor gene or, or that inhibit the ACT pathway. Uh, so the mut uh, mutation in the BTN uh, tend to, do, uh, tend to uh, be associated with, or it was found uh, in adult GBM to be associated with the tumor genesis of, of this one. In, in comparison to pediatric, Polakit al correlated between the RAS and ACT activation and poor survival in pediatric. Vascular endothelial growth factor, and as you are aware of, uh, the, the, this is one of the most vascular tumor that you might be uh, exposed to. And uh, the degree of uh, vascular uh, density and VGF expression uh, is associated with malignancy and aggressiveness of this tumor. Uh, so it can reflect the, uh, on the prognosis of those tumor. And the recent data and clinical trial established antigenic therapy uh, tar uh, target with with and without other cytotoxic medication might be a, a very entertained uh, uh, way to uh, fight against this um, uh, tumor. Uh, namely, the Avastin, which is now uh, recently get the FDA approval uh, as a single agent or in combination agent with the GBM, uh, w was uh, uh, used in a clinical trial. Uh, uh, and unfortunately, in pediatric, it did not show a promising result and it, it did not uh, show uh, um, uh, if, uh, effect on the or impact on the survivor. Uh, however, in, the, in adult, I think it is uh, it is well correlated and becomes uh, like almost the standard of care on all relapsed uh, high grade glioma. The TP53, uh, as we uh, speak earlier, so it, it encodes and uh, for the protein called P53. Uh, and overexpression and mutation appear to vary with age. So uh, the common of mutation and the degree of p53 concentration inside the cells, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, age dependent. And there is a correlation is not all the time between the TP53 mutation and p53 uh, concentration is not uh, correlated. Uh, overexpression is associated with the uh, CV or poor outcome that's well known as a single uh, variant. Uh, and one fourth of analyzed uh, anaplastic astrocytoma and half of the GBMs of over uh, expressed uh, this protein too. The, uh, recently, like there uh, are rules for the histones. So the histones are a nuclear protein that plays an important role in the regulation, amplification, and 
storage of the DNA, uh, and um, the, uh, particularly uh, the H3.3 uh, histones, uh, which uh, uh, is a replacement uh, protein that is used in the brain development area in life, uh, encoded by both genes, uh, H3.3A and B, uh, and it's a major histones that uh, lo uh, loaded in chromatin during brain development, as said, and there are two identified mutation uh, forming these histones, so the replacement of lysine by methionine at the locus of 27, and also guanine and, uh, to valine uh, uh, to, and on locus 34 has been identified. Sorry. Dr. Shakir, one more minute. We give you okay. Um, overall, if I can wrap up, um, yeah. Almost then. So, uh, also, there are some about atrix, the alpha thalassemia mental retardation syndrome, uh, has been uh, involved in uh, uh, causing um, uh, destabilized tolemers in the DNA that induce the tumor genesis as well. And more recently, the isocitrate dehydrogenase, which is an important uh, enzyme uh, that is uh, also a new mechanism of tumor genesis as well, uh, that uh, is responsible to convert isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate. And uh, uh, instead, the uh, formation of alta, uh, alpha ketoglutarate 2 uh, R hydroxyglutarate, which might contribute to tumor genesis as well. And it's exclusively found in adult. None of the uh, pediatric age group has been associated with this. And in conclusion, high grade glioma is highly heterogeneous tumor and requires multidisciplinary approach. And findings from existing data of yet uh, is insufficient toward uh, uh, achieving better outcome, it, but uh, it opens the insight uh, for targeted therapy and better understanding of molecular, um, I mean, tumor biology. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, more clinical trial and research and laboratory, uh, at laboratory level uh, with its own new technology uh, is needed, especially in pediatric age group and uh, nationally as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shakir.